Hello, is your boiler staying on when it should be off? So you've switched off your hot water, you switched off your central heating, and yet the boiler is still coming on. Well, in this video, I'm gonna go through the reasons why your boiler may be running when it should be off, and also some common and not so common faults, which I regularly come across, which may be bringing your boiler on when it should be off. Right, let's get straight on with it. Now, there are several reasons why your heat only boiler or combination boiler may be staying running when the timer says it should be off. Now, the first reason I don't get asked about very often, but it does crop up, and that's when the hot water or the central heating turn off, people sometimes hear the boiler continuing running or the pump running for some time after the boiler should be turned off. Now, this is perfectly normal, and it's the pump that you will hear running and it will continue to run for about five minutes after the timer has turned off. And that's just to pump the remaining heat out of the boiler, which is gonna keep it a little bit more efficient, and it'll also stop the boiler from overheating. And it will continue to run for about five minutes after your timer or your hot water has been turned off. Now, the second reason your boiler may be running, which is perfectly normal, is from frost thermostats. Again, it doesn't matter whether you've got a combination boiler or a heat only boiler, if your boiler is installed in a garage, in an outhouse, in a loft, anywhere where it gets really cold, there's a good chance that your boiler has a frost thermostat inside it. And when it detects that it's getting very cold, it's gonna turn your boiler on. Now, typically, if your boiler has a frost thermostat, around about eight degrees, the boiler's gonna bring the pump on. And that's just gonna pump water around your system and around the boiler to try and warm it up. If the boiler starts getting colder again, and it recognizes getting down to maybe five degrees, the boiler's then gonna bring the burner on and it's gonna start heating itself up to keep itself warm and stop it from freezing. So if you're finding that you're waking up in the middle of the night and your central heating's running, or maybe it's running during the daytime, and the weather's really cold outside, so you know, down to those minus temperatures, then it's probably your frost thermostat in the boiler, which is kicking in and it's keeping the boiler hot and stopping it from freezing. And there's not a lot you can do about that. It's just gonna keep on running whilst it is really cold. Now, as well as frost protection inside boilers, we can also get frost protection, which goes onto pipes and frost protection to protect areas. So if you've got pipe work or maybe a hot water tank up in loft, anywhere where it's really cold, there's a good chance you're gonna have some frost protection. And when that gets cold, it's gonna bring on the boiler. Now the difference with these devices is they are not gonna run the pump first, they're gonna bring the boiler straight on. So the boiler's gonna start heating straight away. With pipe protection, hopefully your pipe's gonna warm up fairly quickly and it'll then turn the boiler off again. Now, if you have area protection where you have a frost thermostat on the wall, then as soon as the temperature drops and the frost thermostat detects that, it's gonna bring your heating or your hot water on to warm that area up. Now, if that area stays cold continuously for a long time, it's just gonna keep on running and it's not gonna turn off that heating or the hot water until the area warms up and that frost thermostat turns off. Now, like I said, there's not a lot you can do about this. If your frost protection is in your boiler, then that's preset and there's nothing you can do about that. If you have pipe protection or area protection, you could check to see what they're set at and maybe adjust those down a little bit if you're trying to reduce the gas bill and stop your boiler from running. The only other thing you could do is to actually turn your boiler off. And obviously then you're risking something freezing and then getting thousands of pounds worth of water damage. So that's not what I would recommend. So that's it for the frost protection, now let's move on. So the rest of this video is gonna be for heat only boilers. That's where you have that large hot water tank and not combination boilers. If you do have a combination boiler, then I've made a completely separate video all about the faults which you may find on your combination boiler, which are keeping it running when it should be off. And you can find that video in the cards above now or down in the description. So what's keeping your heat only boiler running when it should be off? So we are now looking for a fault on our system, which means that we're gonna to have to start taking things apart. If you don't wanna take things apart, then call a good engineer to come and take a look at your system. So there's our programmer, our boiler, our mid-position valve, zone valves, cylinder thermostat, room thermostat, wireless room thermostat, and of course the wiring center, any of those could be giving us a fault because these modern systems can be incredibly complicated and even after 30 years experience, I'm still left sometimes scratching my head trying to work out what on earth is going on. The next part of this video is a little story I made of me going to a property where the boiler was coming on when it should be off and it was causing the boiler to overheat. If you don't wanna watch that and you wanna skip straight to the folk diagnosis, just jump to the next chapter. 
Just before that, I quickly let you know that I make lots of videos to help you with your heating. And one of those is 10 ways to reduce your gas bill. If you wanna watch that video, you can click on the cards above now or you'll find it in the description below. So now let's find out why our boiler is staying on when it should be off. So here's the glow on boiler and it was tripping out with a F5 fault, which is overheating. Now it turns out it had nothing to do with the boiler. So the boiler was working absolutely fine. And once I fixed the fault, the boiler continued to work perfectly okay. So let's go upstairs to a cupboard on a landing where the hot water tank is and the controls. And that's where the fault actually is. Now, as soon as I go into the airing cupboard, I notice that there are some water marks here. These are brown rust marks, which have been dripping from this device up here. If you want to know more about what this device is and how you can stop it from leaking, then I made a completely separate video about that. And you can find that in the cards above now or down in the description. Now, although it was a leak that was causing a problem, it wasn't this device that was causing a problem. It was this one down here. Now, this is an automatic bypass valve. And you can see it actually has drips of water on it right now. And they've actually got a jug down here, which is catching the water. So I can clearly see that this valve has been leaking for some time. Now what's been happening is the water has been dripping out of this valve and it's been dripping directly onto this electrical plug right here. And this electrical plug controls the zone valve right there. And here's the other end of the plug, which has been connected onto the zone valve. You can see the water rust lines have been going across all the terminals causing a short circuit. And it's amazing they didn't have a fuse blow or have the house electrics keep tripping out. But that's probably because there's no earth wire on this zone valve. Now the brown and blue wire operate the motor in the zone valve and the gray and orange wires switch the boiler on and off. Now a note for the engineers here, it's worth knowing that some modern boilers only need a tiny amount of voltage on the switch wire to actually bring the boiler on. So there was less than 50 volts seeping across these terminals at an extremely low amperage, but that was enough voltage on the switch wire to tell the boiler to come on. So although both zone valves were closed, the switch wire was then being told to come on, the boiler would start up, there was nowhere for the water to go, and so the boiler overheated and tripped out. Now before someone shouts, that's what the bypass valve is for, the bypass valve is there to let the water continue to circulate once both the zone valves have closed and the boiler has turned the flame off. So the water can continue to circulate around the boiler, dissipating the heat from the main heat exchanger after the central heating and hot water zone valves have closed. If the boiler fires up when both these zone valves are closed, there's just not enough flow through the auto bypass and the boiler is most likely going to overheat as this one has. Now my job today is to replace this automatic bypass, replace this electrical plug, because it's not worth trying to save that. And I'm gonna also replace this auto air vent thing on the top here with a 28 millimeter MagnaClean. So over here, I've got all the parts to replace that. So I've got my 28 millimeter MagnaClean, I've got my electrical plug, and then there's also the automatic bypass. Now this is a pressurized system, so all I need to do is to drop the pressure on the system. I should then only need to drain the water away from this little part of the circuit because I can isolate the pump valve and of course both the zone valves are closed, again isolating this small part of the circuit. So now I've replaced that auto air bent thing, I've replaced the electrical plug and also the auto bypass. So here's the new automatic bypass and then here's the electrical plug. I'm just tucked that out of the way there just in case the auto bypass decides to start dripping again in the future. And of course, I've also installed the 28 millimeter AD MagnaClean Professional 2. I'm going to top this system up to round about one bar. I can let the air out from the bleed point on top of the MagnaClean. And there we go, it's all topped up now. Now all I need to do is just run the boiler and make sure it's all running fine. Now I thought I'd just add that when I first came to the property, I turned the power off and on, and I noticed straight away, as soon as I turned the power on, the boiler fired up. And of course there wasn't calling for heat, so the central heating and the hot water weren't turned on, and yet the boiler was firing up. So I knew something weird was going on and probably to do with the controls. Now, normally in that scenario, I would then test the switch live on the boiler to see if there was any power on it. But a quick look in the airing cupboard obviously soon revealed what the fault was. So now I can just push the button here to bring on our central heating and hot water. And there goes the boiler. 
Yeah, come on, fan running, flame on. Let's go and check our pipe work upstairs. A little more bleeding of the Magna Clean. And there we go, that's all full of water. I know the hot water valve is open because this lever is all nice and loose. The pump is set to its full power. So you can see the lever is right around on number three. And there we go, it's now all up and running. Now just so you know, if you've got a faulty zone valve or mid position valve and you wanna open it up and keep it open, then you can move this little lever on the end here and then clip it into a little clip and that will hold it open. And I can do the same with this zone valve down here as well. And that keeps both the circuits open, which can help me when I'm bleeding the system. Before we get onto those folks, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard, and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful at all, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up, and that will also help others to find the video. You can click on that subscribe if you like the video, click on the bell if you want to receive a notification, and of course, share the video with your friends. A big thank you to everyone who has thanked me by getting me a cup of coffee and leaving a donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Oh, and don't forget to check out my website where I've categorized all my videos and I've left links to all the products and parts that I recommend. So finding where our boiler is staying on is a process of elimination. And it's more likely to be a controls electrical fault. So here's my heat only boiler and it's a Valiant Ecotec Plus 418. So the first thing I would want to do is to find out whether it's the boiler which is at fault or if it's one of the other controls which are at fault. Now I could do this from the boiler or I could do it from the wiring center. All modern boilers have printed circuit boards inside them and it could just as easily be the circuit board which has gone faulty. But before I go diving into the wiring center, I'm most likely gonna check all the controls and make sure that they're all working correctly. So I'll turn on the hot water and just make sure that the zone valve opens up if it's a zone valve or if it's a mid position valve, it stays in the hot water position and that the boiler fires up. And when I turn it off, the boiler shuts down again and the hot water zone valve closes again and the mid position valve would stay exactly where it was. Then I do it exactly the same with central heating. I turn that on. The zone valve should open up if it's using zone valves or if you have the mid position valve, the valve should move all the way across into the central heating position. Now, not every valve head looks like this one, which is nice and easy to see what is going on. I would then turn the hot water on with the central heating and then the mid position valve should move into the mid position. That is providing the hot water cylinder stat is calling for heat. I would also check the cylinder thermostat by turning the temperature up and down and making sure again, it switches everything on and off as it should do. I'd also check the room thermostat, but that is less likely to be making your boiler stay on. Now, if you have wireless controls like this Honeywell T3R, then you wanna make sure that that is working properly and that the receiver box is turning on and off correctly. Because sometimes I've seen the green light turn on and off on the relay box, but the switching relay inside the box has become stuck and it sticks in either permanent on or permanent off. And if that happens, there's nothing you can do apart from replace the unit. If everything is clearly operating correctly, I'm then gonna go into the wiring center. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I've gotta tell you that you are working with 230 volts and this can kill you. Unless you are an experienced engineer or electrician, I suggest you do not go delving into your wiring center. So here's an old wiring center, which I cut out of a system and I just got on my desk here so I can show you what's going on. So the wires coming in, here we have the room thermostat, that's wired in there. There's the pump, that's wired in. Then we've got the live, neutral and earth, obviously they supply power. And then we've got the mid position valve, that's wired in there. And then we've got the programmer, and then this is the boiler wire. Now this is the one which we're interested in, so I've left that one loose. And then on the end here, we have the cylinder stat. Now this is a wiring diagram which I made many, many years ago. And if you want a copy of it, you can download it from my website. It's what's known as a white plant. So it has a programmer, a mid position valve, a room thermostat, a cylinder thermostat, and the boiler that controls the pump. On the boiler here, we now have a permanent live. So we've got permanent live coming down to the boiler. We've got the permanent neutral and the permanent earth obviously so those wires are always connected to the boiler now not every boiler will be wired in the same but in general this is the way a lot of boilers are now wired in and then we have two extra wires here going down to the boiler 
So we have our gray wire here. So that is our switch wire. So that would be switch live. And on the boiler, it'd be labeled as SL for switch live. And this wire turns the boiler on and off. Then over here, we have our pump live. That'd be labeled as PL on our boiler. And you see that wire comes across and it goes into our pump live wire. So it's the boiler that decides when to turn the pump on and when to turn the pump off. Obviously, always check your boiler manufacturer instructions to check the wiring of your boiler is correct. Now, if this is looking really complicated, then that's because it is. Even with 30 years experience, I'm still left sometimes scratching my head, trying to work out why a system will not work correctly. Wiring centers can be a right mess, making a nightmare to know what's going on. So I highly recommend that you do call a professional. Now the wire that we are interested in is this gray wire here, this switch live wire. What I then normally do is I take my multimeter just here, I would set it to AC for 230 volts, in this case it's 750, and then I would take my probes and I would check what voltage I have got. Now obviously this is not live, so I'm not gonna have any voltage at all, but I will take my two probes and I put the neutral into the neutral, so all these terminals just here are on neutral, obviously the ones which are blue, so I put that into there, and then I will check to see what voltage I've got on the switch live wire. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna have any voltage because it's not wired in. With my hot water and central heating turned off, I'll check the voltage. If it's 230 volts, then it means that something else is turning on. So it may be that the programmer is faulty. Then I go back through and check on the other wires. So number nine in this case would be to check if your central heating is on. So let's see if I've got 230 volts on there. And I'd also check to see if I've got 230 volts on the other connections also. One of the hot water ones will always have 230 volts on it. Now, sometimes I'll come across it where the programmer has actually become faulty. And although the programmer says it is off, I still have 230 volts on that central heating wire. And of course, that would keep the boiler on. An easy check for this is just to remove the programmer and see if the boiler turns off. Now, this programmer is nice and easy to remove, just a couple of screws and it just hinges off. But unfortunately, not every programmer is as easy as this one. With the power still on, these will be 230 volt live terminals. So be careful. If your boiler switches off as soon as you remove the programmer, then it's most likely gonna be the programmer that is faulty. But that is not a guarantee, and I would do additional checks to ensure it was that causing the problem. Go back to my switch wire. So I'm gonna test this wire here and see what voltage is on it. And obviously when everything's off, there should be no voltage at all. So when you turn your hot water or central heating on, we should get 230 volts coming down this orange wire, which is coming from the mid position valve. And it comes across and then comes down obviously into that switch wire on the boiler. Now on the very odd occasion, I sometimes find there is a little voltage here. So somewhere seeping through the wiring, there is somewhere between zero and 50 volts on the boiler switch wire here. And that may be enough voltage to actually bring the boiler on because the circuit board on the boiler is detecting that tiny voltage. Now, typically what I would do is I would come to this switch wire here. So when the boiler is running and when it should be turned off, I would then disconnect this wire and see what happens. So I'll take my screwdriver, put it into here, undo this screw and then pull this lead out and see if the boiler stops running. So we take the switch wire out. So that's now disconnected the switch wire. Then the boiler should shut down. Now, if the boiler stays running with the burner still on and heating, then it's more likely to be the circuit board on a boiler which is at fault. Or it could be that the boiler is actually wired in incorrectly. I never rule anything out. I could then put the switch wire back into its terminal and see if the boiler comes back on again. And if it does, I'll then probably do this a couple more times just to check that it is definitely this which is bringing the boiler on. Now I have found a particular scenario where at certain times this low voltage is a problem and it brings the boiler on. Now the particular scenario which I'm talking about is where the hot water and central heating have been on and then the hot water goes off leaving the central heating on and then when the central heating goes off, the boiler stays running. And then the only way to stop the boiler from running would be to turn the power off. But with the same system, if the hot water is running at the same time as the central heating, and then they both go off together, 
this problem doesn't occur and the boiler doesn't stay running. Now this low voltage seems to be coming from the mid position valve because inside there there is a small circuit board and when the central heating is the last thing running and the timer then turns the central heating off the valve will stay in that central heating position and then on the very odd occasion a small voltage seems to seep through and that can sometimes bring the boiler on. So you could then change your motorized valve or motorized valve head costing around £70 or more and hopefully that would then stop the boiler from running when everything is then turned off. Now there is another option where we can just fit a little capacitor across these terminals and that will remove the voltage and stop the boiler from staying on. Now this is a 0.47 UF suppression capacitor and this is what I use and it removes that small voltage and stops your boiler from staying on. And costing only around £7 it's definitely the much cheaper option. And all we do is wire this in so it goes from our switch live wire to neutral. And it's as simple as that. And here it is again on our electrical drawing. Now we can go through that same check again, leaving our central heating on last before it gets turned off. And you could check across that terminal now and see if you still have that voltage, but more importantly, has your boiler stopped staying on? Hopefully it has and you no longer have that problem. If you're a heating engineer or an electrician and you've seen these capacitors in the wiring centers and you're not sure what they've been for, hopefully this video has helped you out and it's given you that little bit more knowledge because I have found that this fault is not well publicized and I find it is very difficult to find any information on this last fault. So I hope my video has helped you out. I'm afraid I'm not able to go through each individual item explaining how I would diagnose the fault because that just comes down to experience and a good understanding. I just wanted to say again that wiring and fault finding on modern systems can be extremely complicated and finding faults can be a real nightmare. So I strongly recommend that you call a heating engineer or gas registered engineer to come and take a look at your boiler if it's continuing to run when it should be off. So that's about it then. So if you want to watch my video on 10 ways to reduce your gas bill, you can click on the video just here. And of course you can click on subscribe. You can click on the bell, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always my toolbox friend. Bye for now and I'll see you next time.